This video is brought to you by DistroKid. So in order to get a slick and catchy 808 line like this, and now to get that 808 sounding spicy, I use This gives the song a lot of that high energy. Glaive does this a ton and is- Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be making- Hyperpop's interesting. It's a cool blend of nostalgia mixed with modern EDM, hip hop, trap elements. And yes, I unironically love it. Arguably the most important part of Hyperpop is the really thick 808s. But to get there, we gotta figure out a few things. So pay attention. So in order to get a slick and catchy 808 line like this, We need a solid chord progression, and that's because we'll be using the chord progression to map out the notes for the 808. This is the one that I picked, uplifting, but it's catchy. And I make sure to put a transitionary note at the end of this 16 bar loop so that it doesn't get too repetitive over time. And I'm going to layer it with the drum pattern of that's going to look like this. And you'll also notice with Hyper Pop, it uses a lot of different types of drum rhythms. So this is one of them, kind of your basic trap. Make sure you use a thick kick with lots of low end thump. Like that. Put a saturator and I EQ it as well. We pair that with a simple clap like this. And with that pattern, you want to do a set of constant hi-hats so that when you have this kind of trappy pattern, it lets the listener follow along because of the constant rhythm of it. So once you have that trappy drum beat, you can set an 808. And for this song, I used Serum. This is the Serum preset. It's just a sub bass with a bit of distortion on it. That's it. Just make sure you turn the distortion up and noise. There's also noise on it. Regardless of if you use samples or if you make the 808 yourself, these principles will still apply. So I've taken the root note of this chord progression and brought it into the MIDI for the 808 and matched each of these 808 notes with wherever the kick hits. So as you can see, the kick's there, 808 is there. Kick is there, 808 is there. If the kick is there, the 808 is there. This is what that'll sound like. And now to get that 808 sounding spicy, I use OTT. I bump up the output a little bit and then combo it with Saturator and Camel Crusher. This is a free plugin, just set it to ultra fat and <laughs> As for the more subtle effects, I wanted to add a bit of wideness to it, so I use what's called the Haas effect, and I parallel process it, lets me completely separate the dry signal with the wet signal. A few little octave ups to give it a bit of detail. And this will lead us right into the next type of drum pattern in hyperpop that I've noticed, especially with glaive type beats, is this four to the floor beat that they use for the hook. This gives the song a lot of that high energy. Glaive does this a ton in his songs to switch things up and keep that energy going. And what ends up happening is they play the chords along with the beat. And I've done this with an arpeggiator on chord trigger mode. And I've used the same chord progression that we did at the beginning of the song here. You can even take it a step further and set up a sidechain compressor. Put it to the kick and snare and just give it that full pumping effect. I've also got the 808 hitting on every single four to the floor happening there. And this is the most nostalgic part for me that Hyperpop does. And it's the, not because it reminds me of old video games, but because of all the MySpace beats coming up in like 2009, they had this poppy chiptune style. And I love that it's coming back in 2021. In Serum, I just used basic shapes and I set it to square wave, then made an LFO shape that looks like this. So it's kind of like a quick up 
then click down, set it to trigger, BPM, and bar. Then I drag that over to the octave. Set it to around this many, and I have octave up plus one. And that instantly gives you that. This LFO is the magic here. Like if I turn it off, having it automate the octave is what gives it those bleeps. So if you have any other questions about sound design or other things, I go live on Twitch from time to time. So be sure to follow me on there so you know exactly when I go live. And one of the most common questions I get asked is how to release my music. If you're sick of uploading to platforms like SoundCloud where nobody is anymore, today's sponsor DistroKid is a service that you can use to put music into online stores and streaming services. iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Amazon, TikTok, Tidal, and even more, AKA where everyone is. The coolest thing though is DistroKid collects earnings and payments and sends 100%, that's all of it, to you. And on top of all of that, DistroKid has cool stuff like automatic revenue splits. Just tell them who to pay and how much to pay and it'll do the rest. Hyperfollow, you'll have a pre-save marketing page within minutes of uploading your music. And once your release goes live on all streaming services, we add the links to the same page automatically. You can add your lyrics to your songs, get them to send them to services for you. Global timed releases, which means your release goes live at the exact same time everywhere on Spotify and even more in this goodies menu, but <laughs> I'll get into that another time. So thanks to DistroKit for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Finally, to finish up this beat, we need some melodies. There's a few options you can do. You can use a synth, something like this. Or you can just sample something. This is where you can get creative. For this one, I sampled this guitar riff. and it's from one of my favorite bands. Use your own inspirations in your music. Try it, it's fun. But the most important thing is to not overcomplicate it. Despite having all of these elements, you want to keep things pretty open because unlike EDM, you're gonna 90% of the time have some kind of vocal on top of it. Because of this, I keep my melody simple, sometimes only two to three notes. Now, how can you tell if your beat's too busy? Easy, just add a placeholder vocal. In my case, I'm gonna use this banger of a song by Ellie and Juice, and I'm gonna turn it into... Now, the fastest way to get hyper pop vocals, bar none, and the best way is with this plugin called Little Alter Boy. Set the pitch up 12, play with this formant knob, and turn up the drive a little, and this is all in one. It gives you that pitchiness, it gives you that chipmunk sound, and it gives it a bit of distortion. That's without. And you can play with this form and get some really cool sounds from it. Plugins like Auto-Tune will have this as well, and the setting is called Throat. There's also a way you can do it with Ableton's warp modes, but you have to have the vocal in a different key than your song is so that you can transpose it, use Complex Pro, and then play around with this form and slider. Now for some last little details. I like to put a crash on every single kick to give it a bit more power. A few reverses to make everything flow. A little change up on the chord progression to give a little bit more variety. If you wanna go deeper and see how I made this song from start to finish, you can watch that and grab this project file on Patreon. But if free is more your style, please like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on all my socials. But other than that, that's it. Here's the full song.